how inclusive, truly inclusive, is your school? We are told by so many schools across the country, across the world, that their provision is truly exclusive. But we are also told by children and young people that their needs and their differences are being identified and shamed within the classroom in front of their peers. So, for instance, children who fidget, and by the way, children are meant to fidget because we're not designed to be still as humans. We're always told that movement makes us better, movement makes us healthier, and our well being is much better with movement. But anyway, fidgeting children are often identified by having a tally up on the board, how many times they fidget. So little Johnny, I've just noticed you fidgeting. I'm now gonna add that to the board. Yep, there's another mark for little Johnny. There's another mark for little Johnny. So that is shaming. That is identifying something that a child is not in control of. It's shaming the child, traumatizing the child and creating distinctive barriers between the child and their learning. We wouldn't do that to our colleagues at work. That would be considered bullying. So please let's rethink how we identify a child's struggles in a classroom. If it's impacting the adult, then that needs to be dealt with, but not in the way that's going to humiliate and shame the child. Let's get some proper structured support in. Let's identify what that child's needs are. Or maybe let's change the way that we're actually teaching the class so that it incorporates a bit of movement and so the fidgets are inclusive. Everybody is in, included in the fidgeting. <laughs> so it's really, really important that we stop shaming children for their differences, even if they're not special educational needs. We're all different. We celebrate being different. So let's truly do that by creating inclusive environments and stop shaming our children. Stop trying to make everybody look and feel and dress and act the same. As long as we're kind, as long as we're appropriate and our manners are good, as long as we're acting in a way that where we can all coexist in a content manner by being kind, does it matter if a child is fidgeting? Think about it.